welcome back to The Marley Note. Today's video, we are finally talking about music. I'm actually here in one of the practice rooms at the New World Symphony Center. Today's video is gonna be all about how I'm getting back into musical shape. If you watched my video on mental health, then you probably saw that I wasn't really doing as much practicing as I'm used to as a professional musician. A lot of the individual practicing that I was doing over this last year was preparing for concerts for the upcoming week and really just practicing to work, not really practicing for big goals that I have, auditions, or even just practicing to improve and enjoy my practicing this last year was simply to maintain so that I could perform. I'm trying not to feel any guilt over this last year and maybe the lack of practice that I did this last year. Instead, I'm taking today as a restart, a refresh. I'm going to make a plan for how I want to get back into shape. You guys are gonna be holding me accountable. With the pandemic coming to a close, hopefully we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And with that comes more performances, perhaps more auditions, and just more things that I feel like I need to be really at the top of my playing game and ready to tackle anything that is coming my way in the next few months to year and now is the perfect time for me to get back into shape. If you also, like me, took some time off this last year and are looking for a way to motivate yourself to get back into musical shape, then this is the video for you. And if you didn't take time off this last year like I did, then please leave some tips and tricks in the comments down below on how you stayed motivated and inspired and maybe some of the cool things that you've been able to do over this last year. So I've been kind of nervous to film this video because I've not been at the top of my game this last year. I've, like I mentioned, been practicing in order to play well in my concerts here at the New World Center. But my practicing really didn't go beyond preparing for those concerts and recording projects. So I've been trying to figure out how to organize and structure this video. I think that I'd first like to start with making some goals and making a plan for what I'm going to be doing and then maybe we'll, we'll tackle this. So if you'd like to see how I'm going to be getting back into musical shape, then just keep watching. So like I mentioned, I think I'm gonna start this session off by planning. I think I want to go in with maybe like a schedule type of plan and then also like a musical goals, upcoming things that I might be preparing for type of plan. I think that in order for me to really get back into it, I really think I need to schedule my practice sessions. I know that when I'm being successful in like accomplishing my goals, scheduling things out is really helpful for me. So like if it's not in the calendar, I'm gonna be like, I can practice in like an hour. And then I'm like, mm, perhaps not. So I think I really need to schedule these sessions in or I won't get done. The thing that I've been using to schedule rehearsals and just everything day-to-day -day life stuff for the last several months has been this really, really nice, what is it? It just says getting stuff done, so that's nice. I bought this at CGD London. It's really nice, I don't know if you can see. It's got my week, uh, a little plan, a little, what is this, notes, and then like a little quote. So that's been really nice for me because then I can set this, I'll set this on like my kitchen table and you know, I'm passing through like what am I doing today kind of thing. So. I think that I just need to schedule in specific times that I know that I'm gonna be practicing. I also have this bigger like daily planner that I got from the same company. Here's today's date, but it's a little bit more detailed going into my day. I have a timetable so I can kind of really schedule out when my practice sessions are gonna be. And I can check off my water and put in my daily exercise, some self care and a little to-do list. So that's kind of nice. So first things first, I'm going to schedule my practice sessions for this week. Okay, I'm back and I've scheduled my practice for this next week. I've scheduled at least somewhere between an hour and two hours of personal practice time that's like outside of preparing for rehearsals and concerts and such. I'm easing back into it. Eventually I will probably be practicing a few more hours during the day, depending on the day and like what's going on, but it's kind of like, kind of like working out, you know? If you go too hard and then you're too sore and you can't like work out anymore, you know, it's like, just gonna ease back into it a little bit. Okay, so the next step I think for me is to create a list of goals. 
These goals could be auditions coming up or preparing for auditions in general because hopefully they're gonna come back in the fall. It could be for a concert or just maybe your own musical goal that you have for yourself. I have a couple, I think from each category actually that I'd like to set for myself. I have a goal that is actually coming up pretty quickly. I have a mock audition. Here at New World we have mock auditions every once in a while and next week we actually get to play for the principal of Cleveland Orchestra. The New World Symphony regularly brings in musicians from orchestras all over the country and they give us lessons, coachings, and in this instance a lesson and a mock audition. So I have a list of excerpts that I need to have ready for next week that I've been working on and it's one of my goals in my upcoming practice this week. Another one of my goals, it's a bit more long term and a little bit more of like a, a reach goal that I'm going to set for myself. I always set this specific goal for myself and then I kind of like chicken out or get too busy or which I don't know what the quotes are. I literally get really busy. Uh, but. I've always wanted to push myself and apply for a competition and I think it would be really great for me personally, my own musical goals, and just really have a deadline. I find and I've really found over this last year that I work so much better when I'm working towards goals and working towards things and I know a lot of people function like that. A lot of my really close friends just so self-motivated and they're like I have nothing coming up but I'm just so excited to prepare this for nothing and I'm like how do you do it it's very inspiring Corey but for me personally I need to have something that I'm working towards so I would like to prepare the list for the Sphinx audition this is the last year that I can do it and so that's gonna be something I'm saying it here you guys are hearing it leave my mouth I'm saying it it is a goal I have many months to work on it, so it's a lot more long term, but I have plenty of time right now, plenty of time, and I'm gonna use this time to improve. So that's a goal. I also have just like, you know, little musical goals, you know, like playing in tune. <laughs> Even though I'm preparing the excerpts for next week's mock audition, there are a lot more excerpts that I would like to work on in anticipation for hopefully auditions opening up here in the next year. I want to make sure that I'm ready to go when they open up. So that is a lot of goals. That's a lot of things that I want to work on in the coming months, but that's okay because I have many months to work on it and it's always good to have goals. I also, another goal of mine is to really get back into a warm up routine, to get back into the basics. A lot of my practicing, like I mentioned over the last year is just kind of like, gotta get this piece for this concert, gotta get this, you know, thing for this recording project ready to go. And like all of my like basics and scales, etudes, exercises, all of that kind of stuff where I'm kind of just working on the nitty gritty. That hasn't happened in a while and I don't miss it, but I miss it in the sense that I miss it in my playing. I can hear that I've not been doing that. So. That is something that I really want to bring back. Let's bring it back. Okay, I think I have delayed this long enough. It is time to practice. Does anyone else have the experience when you don't play your instrument as frequently or as often as you're used to and then you come back to it and it feels like twice the size. Yes, so another goal. So I think I'm gonna start this practice session with a little self check. How fun. I think I'm gonna do Opus 8, yes. I remember right before the lockdown I was working on these and they're great, great little studies. I was working on these first thing after playing my scales and it was really nice to just like get my fingers warmed up and really get all up and down my instrument and yeah it was just a really great way for me to warm up so I'm gonna attempt we'll see if I can shift <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
because I was so stressed about starting and I just jumped into it and I think the biggest thing about jumping back into things and also if you're not jumping back into things if you're just like you know you just have a good routine I think that really getting the metronome on and playing a little slower is always good for me to start so here we go. I'm gonna try again. Metronome slower. <laughs> about and that can be slightly discouraging when coming back to your instrument and trying to get back into shape is we've been so trained to oh my we've been so trained to be perfect or strive for perfection that when I come back to it I'm a little rusty so hearing myself sound that way is a little like mm! and by that I mean hearing myself not sound the best that I've been able to produce before which is not perfect <laughs> but just hearing myself perform under what I've worked so hard to get to and what we've all worked hard to get to whatever level you're at can be a little discouraging don't get discouraged it's kind of like working out or riding a bike you know you get back into it and it's a little slow, but it comes faster than the last time you came back to it or especially faster than when you first started learning. So it'll come back. It's going to come back with just consistent practice and work, but it can be a little discouraging in the beginning. It's okay. We're in it together. We are alone in a room except for me who's recording it and you can hear it. <laughs> so after warming up, I would go into what I want to work on for the day or for this session. Today's session is obviously a little bit all over the place because I was doing some planning, we're recording, you know, tomorrow's session is going to be a little bit more normal. But I'm gonna go into my excerpts and working on what I'm going to be performing in my mock audition in a week. For my practice sessions this week, because I scheduled between an hour and two hours during the day, Mostly two hours is what I scheduled for myself. I'd probably do half an hour of like scales, sev chick. Yeah, scales and sev chick for about half an hour. And then I jump into my excerpts or whatever else I would like to work on for the day. But because the mock audition is in a week, this is probably gonna be my priority for the next week. And obviously with excerpts come the solo pieces that are usually required for auditions. So that's kind of my game plan for the rest of this session. Looking at pieces that I've played and prepared and worked on for many years because auditions. It's going to be interesting getting back into it. It's both, one, refreshing because I've not played it in a while. So that's kind of nice. Usually when I'm working on these pieces, I'm working on them for months or years at a time, preparing them for auditions. So it's kind of refreshing because I haven't played it in a while and so I'm not like tired of it. That's nice. I get to work on maybe some technique, 
technical aspects of it, introduce maybe some new things because I'm not stuck in maybe some bad habits. It's like a good time to maybe introduce some new things into the piece because it's fresh. It can be, like I mentioned earlier, maybe a bit frustrating because these are some things that are not gonna be at the level that they've been at when I prepared them for auditions in the past, but that's okay. It's gonna be a little refreshing. You know, this is the perfect time to take stuff like this, especially excerpts, they're so short. It can get so like boring sometimes. <laughs> I just looking at the excerpt and you're like, what else could I do with it? So many things, there's always so many things I could do. But you know, if you're staring at something for so long, it's like, eh. So this is nice because like fresh, I can really pay attention to some details that maybe I've missed or yeah, just have a little fun with it. So anyway, enough blabbing, more practicing. <laughs> practice in this next week is going to be slow and really focusing in on intonation and if I miss this is actually really great practice for me to be recording this first session because um, it's making me focus focus and not just like go over things that I missed and it's like mm, if it's being recorded and I'm gonna show it I should probably show them and I like go back and like fix it so always good for me to just like take these sessions a little slower and really focusing in on intonation and if I miss things go back and fix them and like kind of like analyze like why I missed it just kind of like I'm a little detective almost during this practice session like why am I missing things how can I make it better, you know? So this is how most of this practice session is going to go. Yay, stomachs. Yay, octaves. <laughs> That is going to give me a literal nightmare tonight. Okay, that's why we play things slow. Let's not try it again, because then I won't do it wrong. <laughs> cool. So after working on my solo piece for a while, then I would go into my beloved excerpts. Love those. And all of the excerpts on this mock audition list are familiar excerpts. The Don Juan excerpt does require an extra page that I don't play as frequently, so that's probably what I'm gonna look at today. Excerpts are metronome heaven. Definitely pulling out that metronome for excerpts. There it goes. Oh, how I did not miss this excerpt.
when going back to excerpts and not like relearning them but reviving them <laughs> I am really trying my best to focus on everything that's printed I obviously missed some stuff like markings dynamics and accents and all these there's so many markings and generally if I'm working towards an audition I kind of get to the point where it's like you know you like read a sentence over and over and it's like wow I didn't realize that word was misspelled because I just looked at it so many times kind of the same thing with the excerpt so really trying to focus on all the little markings really listening in towards intonation and also trying to have these rhythms be as accurate as possible I will obviously be listening back to this and analyzing what needs to be fixed for tomorrow's practice session so that's kind of how I'm approaching this like getting back into shape a lot of my getting back into shape includes slow practice really focusing listening this is actually I should probably do this like record it like record my practice sessions that's like not new that's not new information everybody knows that that's a tool that we can use I tend to avoid that tool because I hate hearing myself play which is like not in like a bad kind of way but it's like hearing yourself talk you know it's like uh at least that's how I feel when I hear myself talk so hearing myself play can sometimes be a little cringy like oh god like I know that I missed that note but I'm just like praying that I didn't miss that note even though I was in the recording session you know what I mean I'm like oh maybe maybe I dreamt that I missed that note but I'm gonna rehear it anyway so it's a little hard for me to record myself but I think that's also a really good tool when you're getting back into it you know just have another set of ears it's your own ears but it's later ears and the later ears are more critical generally but be nice to yourself be nice to yourself when you're re-listening I'm speaking to my future self be nice I tried and then with the slow practice also my new goal of reincorporating my warm-up routine back into my sessions so my warm-up routine wasn't as long today because I was trying to chop chop with this video but a nice at least half hour of maybe some sub chick some scales open strings just really playing around with the warm-up session and having the warm-up session be intentional like maybe I notice in my practice session like I'll go back and listen and be like mm, maybe my shifts were a little slow or I didn't like you know I didn't like my articulation or whatever maybe I could incorporate that into the next day's warm-up routine in my scales and arpeggios and you know exercises and such but that is day one day one of getting back into musical shape and thank you for joining me on this cute little journey that we had together today if you too are trying to get back into musical shape and you liked today's video then please leave a comment down below and like this video also if you like this type of content and you want to see more music behind the scenes in the practice room then please subscribe to my channel and click the little notification bell so that you know every time I come out with a new video thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week right here at the Marley Note